Well, I'm going to go with Raheem Mostert. I think he's got a great matchup against the Detroit Lions, who allowed the most fantasy points per game to running backs last season. And honestly, I just want to go with anybody in this Kyle Shanahan offense. And I know in week three of the preseason, we don't want to put too much stock in what we saw in the preseason, but he looked fantastic. And I think that we kind of underestimate how good this 49ers team when they're fully healthy and ready to go. Like 2019 is, that should be the benchmark that we're going after, not 2020. And I think that Raheem Mostert and Trey Sermon both play. I think it, I think Mostert's an RB2. I think Trey Sermon is a flex option. A guy who should also be in the lineup is Gus Edwards. This week, he's going up against the Las Vegas Raiders who allowed the fourth most fantasy points per game to running backs in 2020. So the matchup is good. And if you are so confident in going with J.K. Dobbins, then why are why are we pumping the brakes now? Like why, what what is what has Gus Edwards done to you that makes you believe that he's not a top running back in this league? I think he's fantastic. I think anytime you go out and watch watch the tape right now, this is a good running back who's going to take advantage of this situation of playing behind a great offensive line, a great quarterback, and a team that is very efficient at running the football. To me, this is easy. I don't know why. I get tweets about Gus Edwards. Like, there's a lot of dumb things that I say. Gus Edwards starting is not one of them. Gus Edwards hasn't wronged anybody, but what about the running backs who might have ranked? Who are we sitting? Well, I mean, this is nothing personal, but Melvin Gordon, to me, is a, is a player that I don't want to be starting. I know that he was going to have a limited shelf life this season because of the drafting of Javante Williams, and I thought perhaps that Melvin Gordon would get a little bit of run early in the season because Vic Fangio is kind of an old school guy, but he said earlier this week that Javante has earned the trust and they're not against playing him in any situation at any time of the game, which means this is going to be more of a timeshare. This is going to be more of a split. So it's nothing against Melvin Gordon. I just don't think that he's going to get enough opportunity to want to start him against the Giants. And another running back I'm probably going to sit is DeAndre Swift. The 49ers allowed the fifth fewest rushing yards per game in 2020, and that's without being fully operational, fully healthy. And now you got this team healthy and ready to go. You got DeAndre Swift, who's coming off an injury. Now, Dan Campbell said that they have no hesitation getting him back in the lineup. And I think a lot of you made a mistake by not drafting him just based on that. And I think for one week, we're not going to be able to play him. And that's fine. Over the long haul, DeAndre Swift is going to be a very good fantasy running back. This week, I'm going to leave him on the bench. Yeah, and that's something that we may be able to key into an overreaction from guys who did take DeAndre Swift and they get disappointing performance in week one. Uh, perhaps uh, some opportunity to fleece uh, some of your opponents there. Uh, let's look over to some tight ends uh, outside of the obvious, right, because there's the clear uh, ones and twos yeah. across the league. Who, who are we starting at tight end? Yeah, there's five guys that we know are going to start every week. It's Kelsey, Kittle, uh, Mark Andrews, Darren Waller, and the other guy, Kyle Pitts. Okay. <laughs> Let's go into the tougher ones. I'm going to say Zach Ertz is going to be a guy that you're going to want to start this week. Everybody acts like Zach Ertz just forgot how to play football. Everybody was acting like he was going to get traded. And then the Eagles are like, no, he's a good player. Like, why would we get rid of him? We're going to run a lot of 12s. We're going to need him. And Ertz has got a great matchup against the Falcons, who've allowed the fourth most fantasy points to tight ends in 2020. The Falcons allowed 91 receptions to tight ends in 2020. That was tied for the second most in the league. A lot of people, you talk about ignoring players in drafts. Nobody wanted to draft Zach Ertz. You're all going to be scrambling to go to the waiver wire to try to pick him up. You might as well do it right now because it's going to be too late on Tuesday morning. And another guy, I'm going to give you a sneaky guy. This might be for DFS more than anything, but Jordan Akins of the Houston Texans. Listen, the Houston Texans, the city of Houston is the epicenter of that helps no one. Every rando tight end, every defensive player, like J.J. Watt scored tight ends, Mike Bravel. Like, there's been, like, tons of, like, Houston just always has a guy that you're not expecting. Again, probably more of a DFS play. Don't sit there and be like, hey, I, I just picked up Jordan Akins. Do I, do I start him over Kittle? No, that's not what I'm saying. Take some context. I can't mute all of you, but... I think if you need a deep, deep sleeper and you're going danger zone, Jordan Akins is a guy that I would take a look at. All right, let's say you're living the stream at tight end. Who are, is, who are we avoiding? Absolutely this week. Well, I think Eric Ebron is a comfortable, familiar name that some people might have drafted if you panicked on the position. You know that the Steelers have a history 
of targeting their tight ends. But the rookie, uh, Pat Freemuth, he was targeted more than Ebron in the in the preseason. And so for me, I look at this matchup against the Bills, who were very tough against tight ends last season. I think this is one we got to avoid. So it, it, it this was a comfort play. It was like getting the Chris Cut fries at your favorite diner. Like, oh, yeah, it's familiar. But, you know, at some point you got to be like, no, maybe I'll mix in a salad or something like that. Um, we're not starting Ebron. Yeah, to, just avoid. Uh, avoid. There's plenty of guys like Jordan Gay Akins, who, again, as Rank said. Let's do it. We're, we're, yeah, we're, let's go. We're not saying bench Darren Waller. But if you need no. a tight end, uh, go ahead and, and make a Jordan Akins uh, touchdowns count for something uh, here oh, and help please. someone in 2021.